The Kaweka Forest Park is home to some fantastic examples of pioneering huts, built from the simple materials that our forefathers found around them in the bush. These huts provide clues as to what life was like in this area over the last hundred years, so let's learn more about a couple of great remnants of our historic heritage. We used to come in here skin shooting, that was around about 1954 and this country used to carry lots and lots of red deer and uh, we came here with the idea of shooting big numbers of skins. And was there quite good money in, it in those days? There was very good money but it was hard, hard work. This hut was actually built by uh, a Norwegian chap. This is uh, the order of something in, in Northern Europe of the slabs being edged into, into slabs, uh, stood vertical. So this is kind of unique for New Zealand because all the other camps that I've ever stayed in were malthoid or sacking or something we even made out of manuka, just put over poles and they're just bivvies, bivouacs. So this is your kitchen and, over yep, here? Yep, table. Yep. Fork. Fork. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the beds, were they any good? Would you stay in one when now? When you're very, very tired, yes, they're, they're pretty good, Are but they? uh, due to the fact they haven't got a mattress to freeze on your back, mainly because of the height of the bed off the ground and the draft underneath, they're very cold. This is how I used to get in. Yeah. You know, pull me sleep bag up, get in, lie back here and yarn away for a while, <laughs> stay out of sleep. <laughs> but when was the first time that you came into the Iron Fale here? In 1933, as a, as a schoolboy from the local school at Booker Tea Tree. What were you doing in here? My father came in to, to uh, control rabbits around the, the flats up above here. We sort of lived off the land. There were lots of wild sheep here and deer. My father was an ab hand at, at cooking up wild mutton. When we were here at Christmas time, some of the sheep had lambs and they were early born, so they were quite big and lovely to eat. I can remember that. Was it comfy living in here? Not particularly, but it was such an adventure, we, uh, we enjoyed that. Most nights when we were here, we would hear kiwi here in the bush, and kiwi sound is sort of stuck with me. But it was an introduction to the mountain lands, and that love of the mountains has remained with me ever since. Eddie, why is it important to look after old huts like this? I think the key thing really is just the historical significance of these buildings. and. Um, once we lose them, they're gone forever, and it's good for also the younger generation, like myself, and uh, to come back and view, hey, this is what life was like back in the old days. So it's really important that we retain that history. This is split beach and a bit of tautata in it, actually. Generally, you can split or you can get adzed. So, yeah, that's the type of character that you want to portray. The old huts in the Kawekas, like the Iron Whare and the old Manson hut, are amazing remnants of our pioneering past. This legacy of basic mountain accommodation built for a number of purposes is virtually unmatched elsewhere in New Zealand. And while the huts are great reminders, people like Bill and Max are crucial for continuing to tell our stories of life in the bush.